trades, signings, and prospects. It's been a busy offseason for the New Jersey Devils. To recap everything, let's bring in Matt Lachlan and Amanda Stein. Welcome to the summer and welcome to a really exciting time for the Devils franchise. Let's start with trades. Last week, Tyler Toffoli, a forward from the Calgary Flames, was acquired by the Devils after New Jersey sent forward Yegor Sharangovich and a third round pick in this year's draft up north. Amanda Toffoli had his career best numbers all across the board last season, but what role are the Devils expecting him to have with this lineup? Well, certainly for him, it's about his leadership. He's talked about that before, how uh, one of the first things that Tom Fitzgerald did say to him is, I'm bringing you in here to bring a little bit more of the leadership role. Not that they were lacking it, but certainly something that needs to be there. Now, when it comes to Tyler Toffoli, yes, a career year last year, but if you look at his numbers throughout his career, he's a finisher. He's not going to necessarily score you 30, 35 goals, but what he's going to do is be an excellent complementary piece to whatever center he's playing with, whether it's Nico Heischer or Jack Hughes or anywhere up and down the lineup. He is someone from the wing that has that shot. He is a finisher. And really, I think that that's something what this team has needed to go into this offseason with is to find someone who can complement the guys who are already doing a lot of that. And should help on the power play, too. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Another, absolutely. Another addition to kick things off on free agency day, defenseman Colin Miller joins the Devils from Dallas. New Jersey giving up a 2025 fifth-round pick, so not even a factor for next year. Matt, what have you heard about what he can bring to the decor this year? You know, he's coming off a really good year, not so much in the playoffs where he was a healthy scratch in the Vegas series in the final four games of the postseason, you know, some turnovers in the first two games, and he found himself watching in street clothes. That being said, he had a really good year. I know plus minus is an old school stat, but he was a high plus skater. He was paired with uh, Miro Haskinen, so he saw a lot of top minutes uh, with their best defenseman. He had a wonderful year, passing the puck, scored a little bit. Uh, whatever happened at the end, he just wound up, as I said, watching the games from the press box. That being said, he brings that veteran experience. The Devils lost an awful yeah. lot of games in terms of Severson and Graves departing for other venues. And so they bring a guy in who will, you know, I would say he's not going to be the top guy as he was at times in Dallas. I think he's going to be more a uh, depth guy, sixth guy, but brings experience because the Devils did lose so much. And even though they lost, you know, they lost so much, and a lot of the players that will be pushing for those spots are guys with no experience. Yes. So that's going to be exactly what you're talking about, that complimentary piece. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about some big re-signings over this offseason. When the Devils traded for forward Timo Meyer before the deadline, they knew New Jersey would sell itself. An eight-year contract, and Meyer will be a huge part of the Devils in their quest for their next Stanley Cup championship. What did you see out of Meyer in his first season with the Devils? Toughness, shoot-first mentality. Uh, I didn't realize how strong he was. We saw it in the postseason. He gets rocked on the big hit by Jacob Truba. He comes back. Now, did he score as many goals as he would have liked since coming over from San Jose? No, he had nine in the regular season and contributed a little bit in the postseason. But I think Tom Fitzgerald's absolutely right. It's a tough situation for a player to move to a new culture, new part of the country, and the pressure that's on you to perform. Uh, and I thought he did overall quite well. He just probably didn't score as many goals as everyone was expecting. That being said, 40 goal scores don't grow on trees. They got one. They got one for eight years. And I think it speaks volumes that he wanted to come back here. The extra year helped, but the winning is utmost in his mind. And when you look at Meyer, he could have explored the free market and he could have seen what else could I have gotten from another team. But he took a little bit of a price hit in order to stay in a team that is building towards a championship. And as general manager Tom Fitzgerald says, the window is just opening. Meyer also led the Devils in hits, 
not only in his section of the regular season, but also in the postseason, showing that physicality is something that New Jersey desperately needed. Another eight-year contract for Jesper Bratt. The past couple of years, it's been shorter contracts for him and the Devils. What does this eight-year contract say about Bratt's commitment to being in New Jersey? Well, it says what he's always said is true, is that he's wanted to remain here in New Jersey. And I think when you fluctuate on those smaller kind of deals, you kind of wonder, is that really true? Well, he puts pen to paper, he signs a long-term contract, and now I'm wondering what the next level for Jesper Bratt is. You know, he's been great in the regular season. He's had career year after career year, which is wonderful to see for a guy who is still really young and coming into his own. But the next step for Jesper Bratt, particularly with a, comment, or a, a contract like the one that he has now, is what can he do when this team hits the postseason? He was disappointed with his performance. He did did have some solid flashes, but he's going to have to bring more like he does in the regular season. So we'll see what happens because this is a team now that expects going forward to constantly be in the playoffs. So it's not a one year on, one year off kind of deal. He's going to have to be able to perform in the postseason at a very high level going forward, particularly for the money that he's making. Forward Eric Holler was brought into this team to bring that playoff experience. He's been to the playoffs in eight of the nine seasons he had before joining the Devils. Holler brought physicality and also had the second most goals in the Devils postseason run. When you look at Holler saying, I want to be here, what can he bring to this team with that intense passion for being here in New Jersey? Well, it's just that, and I didn't realize how intense of a player he was. You watch someone from afar over the years, you don't get a full picture, and then you see him up close and you realize – this guy is intense, and he expects a lot out of his teammates. Season didn't go exactly the way he wanted. Rough start, posts, missed shots, all that highway robbery by goalies. But when we saw him starting to score some goals, we saw his ability in the corners, you realize what kind of a player he was. And I think signing the three-year deal will bring out even more in him. He finally has some stability. He's got a young family. He's tired of moving around. And I think he appreciates the fact that he can do something here in Jersey because – what happened in Boston? They put together this great team, and then he got traded. Devils are the beneficiary because he signs a three-year deal. Now he can stick around and enjoy some of the fruits of what's developing here. Two players signed together, had their press conference together. No wonder they are best friends. Forward Michael McLeod and Nathan Bashan signed one- and two-year deals to remain in New Jersey. Amanda, you were on that call with them. They were grinning ear from ear. Besides the excitement that they both have being in New Jersey, what have they brought to this organization? Well, it just meant everything that it all happened on the same day. They had their press conference together because it just sort of speaks to who Nate and Mike are when it comes to their friendship. But what it brings is it shores up a little bit more of that bottom six and it gives a little stability there. For Mike McLeod, this is the really important one. He's betting on himself with a one-year deal. He has really been coming into his own as a first-round pick, maybe trying to figure out the last couple of years how he fits into the equation. Well, now we know a little bit more. He's got that toughness. He's got that ability to score big goals, you know, when he can, like he's, we just saw in the playoffs. And, of course, his, his um, face-off numbers are remarkable, and they were remarkable all last year, and it's only something that hopefully will get better for him. So he's a really interesting one because he's someone who's betting on himself, saying, all right, I'm going to do this one-year deal and then see sort of what's ahead for me. And for both of them, as the cap goes up, they'll have an opportunity, should they continue to have some success, to benefit from that. So, yeah, I, I'm surprised more players don't roll the dice on themselves, bet on themselves. This was the perfect scenario, and I'm looking forward to see what Mike can do because I think he finally understands who he is as an NHL player. He said on a radio interview that it took him a while. You're a first-round pick. You're expecting to do X. The reality is not everyone can get there, so how do you stay in the league? And he's done the face-off thing. If he can just have the patience <laughs> with the hands like we saw in that goal, who knows what the future holds. That playoff goal was ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> just <laughs> wanted to put that out there. <laughs> when it comes to building a winning team, a lot of that involves culture. Let's hear from General, General Manager Tom Fitzgerald on the culture he's built here in New Jersey. About the culture that's been built in the locker room, and you see guys like Meyer, Bratt, Halla. I mean, Halla was as excited as anybody to want to remain here. So mm -hmm. what's been built in that locker room so far? Well, the people. You know, people build cultures. People are the ones who set the standards and the expectations within that locker room. You know, I'm a big proponent of, you know, what you, what you permit is what you promote. You, if you, you permit, you know, mediocrity, then you're promoting it. You know, if you, if you pr permit excellence, um, you're promoting it. So you, you permit 
getting on the ice early uh, or late, then you're promoting it. Um, so um, you, the players, first and foremost, it's their locker room. You know, I can say this stuff, but they've got to carry it out and they've got to believe in it. And uh, the culture's only getting stronger, I can tell you that. I had really no idea that it was going to be the Devils, so I was just happy it's finally come. <laughs> There's no way this smile's going to come off my face for a little while now, so I'm definitely excited. Damon Severson again. Rashad, he scores! Damon Severson, that's his first National Hockey League goal. It's wide open here in overtime. Severson with a tremendous play on lock from the air. Two on one, Severson. Severson, he scores! Damon Severson! Severson jumps, he scores! With additions come subtractions. Defenseman Damon Severson was traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets and the longest tenured Devils player moves on. It was still a great opportunity for the Devils to gain something, though, a third-round pick for upcoming UFA. And then after that, RFA Mackenzie Blackwood was traded to the San Jose Sharks for a six-round pick in this year's draft. Several players testing free agency right now from the Devils, including Tomas Shatar, Ryan Graves, Miles Wood. So there's opportunities for some of these younger players who have been in Utica or just starting to join the franchise to fight for a spot. What openings do you both see with this current roster? Uh, you know, we, we talk about bottom six, and I don't want to limit these guys to playing a fourth line role, mm -hmm. but I think our third line is much improved, so I don't know if they really have a chance to be to that, that yeah, bottom yeah. six, okay? if that math makes any sense. But I think you're going to see, yeah, as you mentioned, guys from Utica, Nolan Foote's going to be given a chance. Graham Clark's going to be given a chance. And Alexander Holtz is going to be given the ultimate chance. This is a great opportunity for him to show that he's ready to take the reins and become a full-time National Hockey League player. Uh, he had has had spurts, but never has been able to put it together. I think last year he probably should have gone to Utica. I'm not the general manager, but... <laughs> That's my point of view on that. I think he probably spent too much time here with the Devils not playing. However, this is uh, you know now in the past. And so let's see what he brings. Let's see what he brings to the table. We know about the shot. He's going to be given an opportunity. And, you know, Tice Thompson is in that mix, too. So I think the young guys are going to be given a chance. I don't think the Devils are going to make too, much, too many other moves. I think what you see is what you get, and we'll see what the young guys can bring to the table. So I'll take the defenseman, because you sort of ran through those forwards. <laughs> um, when it comes to potential players pushing for a spot on defense, again, there aren't that many spots, but there are a couple players earmarked to at least make a push when it comes to training camp. And, of course, there's Shimon Nemitz, who is one of those players. But Tom Fitzgerald has cautioned. You know, we hope he can make it. We hope he can make that push. But we're not going to put him in a position he's not ready for. He had an outstanding season for a player coming over from Europe, you know, getting used to North American life, getting used to North American style, ice, all that stuff. And he had a really good season. So you're going to see something like him kind of pushing for a spot. And it'll be really interesting to see how it all works out. But of course, you know, just like you were saying, Matt, you've got Luke Hughes, who you know is going to be on this team, given what he did last year. You've got, you know, Colin Miller, who will be in a position as well. Dougie Hamilton and a lot of those guys. And then the really interesting one for me is seeing what Kevin Ball is going to become this year. Because for Kevin Ball, he made so many strides last year. And Tom Fitzgerald has actually actually mentioned him several times when we've talked to him this summer about expecting more in a positive way and the way he can kind of grow into his role. I think he's going to be a big part of what's going forward. But we've, they've lost a lot of uh, experience on the back end, but this is a time to sort of grab hold of, of what's coming next. And that's why I think there might be a defenseman coming along, maybe on a PTO, mm -hmm. maybe a minor deal, simply because if you're going into next season and we have high hopes for the youngsters, Luke Hughes has great skill. Nemitz, we've seen some of his toughness and his developing game down in Utica. And Kevin Ball, as you just mentioned. But they don't have a lot of yeah, experience. Lot of experience. That's two rookies and basically a rookie. Mm -hmm. So if three of your six 
are lot. that young, that puts a lot of pressure on everyone else, puts pressure on them. Could be a good thing, but you know, there could be that step back too. So I think there could be another veteran guy in there. Who that is, I don't know. Uh, so there could be someone who would point. be given, it's, it's given a, very a shot. Good point. Something the Devils have prided themselves on is growing their prospect pool and growing the players that end up being on that main Devils roster. Let's take a look at the behind the scenes of the draft for New Jersey this season. Welcome to Nashville for the 2023 Upper Deck NHL Draft, rounds two through seven. The floor is packed, the teams are set, and so are we inside Bridgestone Arena. Lenny Heymanaho, a right winger, played the entire season in Liga, made his league debut at age 17. Yeah, I think we had a good chat in the combine, and I think, uh, yeah, when I heard that Devils is next up, I was just waiting and so happy that I heard my name. The Devils pride themselves in building and growing their own players that they pick in the draft. And this year's draft class, five new prospects added to the fold, starting with the 58th overall pick, Lenny Hamanajo. Hamanajo is known for being a very skilled, strong hockey IQ player in Finland right now, playing in the top professional men's league. As a result, he's earned minutes against men. So when he does make the jump over to the AHL and NHL, he should be a promising prospect. There's full team coverage of the draft and all the newest Devils on NewJerseyDevils.com and including one of the most special moments of this year's draft. General Manager Tom Fitzgerald was the first captain of Nashville Predators history, and he was able to trade the Devils' seventh-round pick to his former GM, David Poyle, for his final pick as the GM of the Predators. Let's take a look at that special moment. Nashville is on the clock. That, that is really cool. What, what a gesture right there. Like, I, I love that. That's a career coming full circle, yeah, right? Yeah, the hockey world's very small. The connections, it's amazing uh, how it all comes around. This, this is isn't great. just a uh, this isn't just a hockey trade. This is a uh, this is a moment for these gentlemen here. Trotsy was uh, the first coach here with uh, with Fitzy back in the day, and of course David's been a staple here. And I was uh, you know I was fortunate to work here in Nashville under David and and develop a relationship with Trotsy and. I don't, I don't know if they get any more classy than uh, those two gentlemen in that picture, guys. What a cool move. I, I love that. I think that's Thanks just a... Draft, check, free agency, check. There's still plenty of summer left. What do you both expect the Devils to still focus on before it's training camp in September? Well, I wonder if a goaltender in terms of a trade on the free agent market is someone that might be brought in over the next few weeks. I'm probably thinking maybe in terms of a trade dynamic because there aren't that many goaltenders out there right now. I don't know how comfortable you are going into the season with just Vitek and Akira, just because there is limited experience there. And I think that this is a team that probably wants to see Akira, you know, get a little more experience. He had a great run last year. Let's not discredit that. But he is still young and he is still sort of figuring out the NHL game. So to me, I wonder if that's somewhere where we see a focus is in bringing in another goaltender, whether it's someone who has a little more experience or not. I don't know because it's not easy to acquire a goaltender in this league. So I think that to me might be an area to keep our eye on. Yeah, I, I agree. As I mentioned uh, a short while ago, I think in terms of the players, it'll only be a defenseman they'll go after. I think the forwards are set. But goalie's an interesting situation because I know – the way it ended, people were disappointed, and he was disappointed, Vitek Vanacek, in how his game didn't survive, if you will, the postseason. And so they're like, well, can he do it? Hey, he won over 30 games. Yeah. He proved himself that he can be uh, the number one guy. And so he's the guy who's going to take the mantle and run with, it, with this team. But we also know... Uh, the Corey Crawford story, and we know what's happened with goaltenders with the devil. So there's probably some sense of if we can just get somebody who can handle mostly AHL, but be an NHL guy mm -hmm. if we need him. So somebody might be coming along uh, that route. But I think overall, the Eric Schalgren deal locks up the AHL and yeah. the ECHL. So that between Dawes and Poulter and Schalgren, that takes care of that. So there might be someone kind of that in-between. But Vtech's the man. Yep. 
Up next, Devils Development Camp, which kicks off July 9th. We will have full coverage on NewJerseyDevils.com. We hope you all feel a little bit more caught up with the busy offseason to start for the New Jersey Devils. And for Matt Lachlan and Amanda Stein, I'm Catherine Bogart. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your summer.